The breath of history. Very often when I'm reading these poems now, I have to explain a little bit about the context because mercifully, we have changed so much in Ireland. We have really experienced a political and cultural revolution. These poems were written in the 90s. And very often when any of us, as, as a few of us did, read poems that included the experience, political poems as they were considered, and poems about women's lives, which were actually personal poems, but because they were about women, they were seen as political. We faced a storm of criticism because the received wisdom at that time was that this was not the subject of poetry. There were certain agreed subjects for poetry, and that was, of course, love of men for women and battle, great wars, and celebration of place. They were really the three accepted subjects. And in the 80s and 90s, when I first began to read, more than once it was said, and not as a joke, why do we need to hear these poems? This would be when women stood up to read. Haven't we the three E's? Isn't that enough? And the three E's were the only published women at the time, Elaine Quillanon, Ethna Strong, and Ivan Boland. So The Breath of History is another poem in response to that context. And it uses a, a phrase that was very often used by women who found these subjects difficult. They were, would always describe themselves as ordinary. And I would point out to them that actually they were very privileged and that any of us who had been taught to read were actually privileged. And sadly, that's still the case in our world, even in 2017. If we have food to eat and clean water to drink and have been taught to read, we're not ordinary, we're privileged people. The Breath of History. I am not an ordinary woman. I wake in the morning, I have food to eat. No one has come in the night to steal my child, my lover. I am not an ordinary woman. A plum tree blossoms outside my window. The roses are heavy with dew. A blackbird sits on a branch and sings out her heart. I am not an ordinary woman. I live where I want. I sleep when I'm tired. I write the words I think. I can watch the sky and hear the sea. I am not an ordinary woman. No one has offered me life in exchange for another's. No one has beaten me until I fall. No one has burnt my skin nor poisoned my lungs. I am not an ordinary woman. I know where my friends live. I have books to read. I was taught to read. I have clean water to drink. I know where my lover sleeps. She lies beside me. I hear her breathing. My life is not commonplace. At night, the air is as sweet as honeysuckle that grows along the river bank. The curlew cries from the marshes far out, high and plaintive. I am no ordinary woman. Everything I touch and see is astonishing and rare. Come celebrate each privileged, exceptional thing. Water, food, sleep, the absence of pain, a night without fear, a morning without the return of the torturer, a child safe, a mother, a lover, a sister, chosen work. Our lives are not commonplace. Any of us who read this but who knows, tomorrow or the day after, I feel all about me the breath of history, pitiless and ordinary.